My name is Matt Sweeney. This is Guitar Moves. I'm in New York City at Electric Lady Studios, and I'm going to walk into Electric Lady Studios and talk to Keith Richards about guitar. But I'm not sure if he's going to touch a guitar because we were told that he probably won't play guitar. But it's going to be Keith Richards and me talking about guitar at the very least, and I'm freaking out. Bad. Freaking out bad. But I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to sit down in front of some lights, yeah, Keith Richards, guitar moves. Thank you so much for coming down. Hey, pleasure, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This show is called Guitar Moves. I somehow became a professional guitar player a little bit later in life, like in my 30s. I... Well, that means you get paid for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I somehow get, get paid for it. And me and my friends were talking about how it would be good to do a guitar show where it's just two guys sort of talking about guitar without being particularly lofty about the... Yeah, uh, about whatever, it. And then, and then I ended up doing it, and it ended up kind of taking off. Maybe when I was 18, I read an interview with you where you were talking about the right hand, and you're like, it's all in the right hand, it's all rhythm, and, and like... It's, you, it's, and it's, and it's, wrist. Yeah, and it says yeah. he bangs the table for emphasis or something <laughs> like that. And I remember, I, at, at that time, I had never thought I never thought that way, even though, it was, of course, it's perfect. I know, everybody thinks this. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and, and the guitar can't speak unless you, unless you hit it. No. There's two sides to every story. Right. Do you mean this <laughs> yeah, and this? Yeah. And if that one don't connect with that one, then you're getting, what, one and a half stories? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, you have to get this one and this one to love each other. If we're going to talk about a guitar here for a moment, please, I would say that uh, the acoustic guitar is the most important thing for a guitar player to, to start with. Learn the feel and the touch of that string and what that does against the fret. Learn that, then. Then you can add the effects later on, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to be a guitar player, you, you have to have your grounding. It's like anywhere else. I mean, an astronaut doesn't start in space, you know. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to build a rocket. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Did you learn a chord? Did somebody show you a chord? Me, my, yeah. my guitar lessons. Thank you. Came from my grandfather who had a guitar. He was a musician, you know. He was a fiddle player, also he'd been a sax player. I mean, he was a pretty much you know, all-around... I mean, even though, like, big deal or anything, but he loved his music and there was always instruments around. Was he a pro? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how he made his living? Yeah. When, Exclusively? Oh, now and again. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and, uh, he had a guitar set up on the, you know, it was hanging up on the wall, and I was this high. And he teased me for years about it, you know, because you know, he kept noticing, I kept looking at this damn thing. You know? Up on the wall? Yeah. yeah. Uh, out of reach? Was it, was uh, it was Way it? out of reach. That's so know? cool. Uh, to the point where he said, well, you know, if you can reach it, you know, you know, then I'll let you, like, play around with it. So I figured out I go and I got the chair and like <laughs> you did not. That's amazing. A couple of big books <laughs> wobbled my way up. Came back in the room, had got the guitar. He says, "Okay, all you got to learn is learn a little piece. It's called Malaguena. It's a Spanish piece." He hummed it to me and showed me the first move. Da 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 da. da. You know, you're really not going to do it. Let's see. And he said, if you... He does that. that. He, he, he shows you that. He showed me that bit. And that was the only bit he showed me. Show me no chords, you just show me the notes. Just the notes. So you didn't use a pick the first time you, you... No, no, finger, fingers, yeah, no. A pick came later and uh, 
And actually, I mean, I must say, to tell the truth, that was what he showed me. Okay, got gotcha. you. So later on, and then... that move. Like to play it. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, you Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why it was that piece. Well, because of that. Because of the. I think because it was an. He thought that was a great exercise to, you know, to learn uh, where notes are and the possibilities. So the next thing is like, you know, how to screw a guitar out of my, <laughs> you know. And? What do I got to do? <laughs> ah, man, I did odd jobs and I did uh, the Christmas postal thing. You know, Christmas, they'd hire guys you know, and they'd, they'd deliver all the Christmas mail. And I, Were you making a show of it? Like, listen, I'm doing this yeah, because yeah, I want yeah, this yeah, guitar. I mean, I'm trying to impress my, but also right. I'm trying to make some money, right, you right, know right. what I mean? Right. And, so, I mean, maybe make 15, 20 pounds, which is not enough for a guitar, but I gotta say this to Ma, that she saw my effort there right. and she sprang for a guitar for me. And I think I was about 13, and a you know, little gut string, acoustic, you know, but it was enough for me. And are you figure out how to like make a chord like, cause so you, you're showing that, or you figure out an A minor chord and an E chord, right? I think actually from Gussie's uh, show Malagoina, I learned E, E majors, F majors, oh, okay. G major, A minors. But the rest of it I learned really just from listening off the records, and listening over and over and over again. Thinking, what did he play there? You know, and, uh, I would spend all day like trying. You know, but I should have been trying to get laid. But I was playing guitar. <laughs> I think I think it kind of worked out. Yeah, no, I mean, I was sublimating, you know. Sure, yeah, yeah. no, I, I feel you on that, too. Because yeah, all that, that teenage rage going into yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. learning and the obsessiveness and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, I mean, all the energy and all of whatever's happening inside you at that age is like... I read a quote of John Lennon saying that the, that the Beatles stopped, the Beatles broke up when they stopped sitting around listening to records together. And he said that that, that was like a real thing that they would do, and, a, and a, a big part of the of what makes a band a band is hanging out and listening to John's tunes. John's a very honest man. This is stupid, right? Yeah, I mean, I, that seems... I would say, you know, yeah. I mean, that's what happened. In, in a way, it happened to the Stones, except we didn't. It, it, it uh, we weren't put in that same position as sure. the Beatles. Yeah. Um, but were you guys hanging out and listening to? Do, do you recall a, a, a chunk so of time? So we did. There was nothing right. else to do. Right. You know? right. <laughs> well, you want to eat? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we just sit around listening to records and wonder how like, how Jimmy Reed handled that five chord, which is also a, a mystery to all of us. And funny enough, Bobby Goldsborough showed it to me on a bus. Because he'd happened to do, and I mean, he's not a blues man. I mean, he's a sunny. Yeah. But he'd happened to be on the road with Jimmy Reed, and and he showed me the simplest trick. Can I, I can I trouble you for, to show I them the acoustic? Maybe show you that. See, Jimmy Reed. I mean, is the, the most minimal and most beautiful song. Of... Then when he want to hit the five chord, he go. See, he got the seventh hanging. So it's sustained and un yeah, unresolved yeah, sounding. Even bothered her. Yeah. So everybody go. <laughs> but he go. <laughs> oh. He can't even be bothered to shift his finger for that. <laughs> And Jimmy Reed was a, a very big uh, deal with the Stones. It's so minimal, Jimmy Reed's stuff. And uh, 
and yet it is so hypnotic. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. well, you can do all kinds of things with silence. You know, if I was a painter, I would walk into the studio and say, here is a blank canvas, you know, there it is, it's on its easel and there's nothing on it, you know. A lot of guys want to go in the studio and they want to cover every damage to the canvas. Right, right. <laughs> when did you decide that you were going to figure out how to play this completely alien from Mars music like blues, you know what I mean? That, that, that obviously speaks to the heart, but still, like, it's so... Mm -hmm. I know it's. And seems... how, did, how did you figure it out? <laughs> it was a very musical family. Right. You know, um, my mother used to play to me uh, Billy Holiday, you know, Louis, Duke Ellington, you know, Billy Eckstein. So your ear is uh, developed. Yes, yeah. yeah developed. You know, so I was. Uh, my ears were attuned to blues and jazz uh, automatically. Okay. You know, I, I sort of grew up, you know, with black music. Really. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So, so, so. I mean, we heard a lot of white too, but we. Sure. Didn't, you know, you know. Right. <laughs> Are there other kids at this point who are playing guitar, or are you alone in your pursuit? At that time, pretty much, yeah, alone, yeah, yeah. Hey, we're 13 year olds, most of us are like, you know, doing what 13 year olds sure, do, you sure. know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, man, see, I got into the Boy Scouts. Oh, you nice. know. For a while, I mean, I, I, I just kept the musical things in my side. Would you go on camping trips, like overnights? Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, man, we were, we were the... I finally got expelled from the scouts. Were you like life scout? Yeah. Did I'll, sound keep, I'll keep the life. knife. <laughs> you cut the knife? Yeah. <laughs> was it a pen knife, like the folding thing? No, no it's a sheath knife. No, no it's a great, uh, a miniature Bowie. <laughs> so then it's back to guitar. Yeah, I mean, I was always there, you right. know what I mean? But, was something like when you first heard Heartbreak Hotel, the, uh, the Elvis song, I always think of that as a song. That's a pretty that, good It's uh, so example. stark. It's yeah. stark, yeah. science, space. I mean, there's very little going on in that record. Did that strike you at the time? I think uh, it was probably one of the heaviest hammers that ever hit me. Right. Yeah. Sure. I was starting to listen to Scotty Moore. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. With Elvis, behind Elvis, I'm starting to listen to Eddie Cochran. And are you picking up on these? On these? Are you listening and learning? Are you learning? Yeah, the I'm. Give I mean, I me mean, a record. I'm trying to. What the, what the these guys doing? Man? Yeah, this this is what I'm asking about. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, 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 I mean, this is all fuel. Like, you know, Scotty Moore was my hero. He, you know. Can you recall the first? And ideally play the, the, the first Scotty Moore lick that, that you're like, I got this. You know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what it was? Yeah, I'm left, you're right, she's gone. Can, can I, would, would you mind? No, I can't remember it. You can't remember it? Uh, yeah. so I, I'd, I'd defy uh, Scotty to remember it either. I see, I see. You know? it was a, it was uh, a, but there was just something a about the way he played. And then I heard Chuck Berry, man. Okay. Was there a Chuck Berry, <laughs> was there a Chuck Berry lick? A little the, Queenie, man, little Queenie. Just that looseness that almost, you know, like, hey, this is easy, you know, and can you just show, the can, way Chuck could. Can you no, show not, the children? Not on acoustic. What's that? Not on acoustic. Not on acoustic? No, no. Do you want to do that? No, I don't want to play it. <laughs> you know, it's not my job here. I charge. <laughs> but but acoustic's free? Was, no, because it was then, listening to Elvis, Scotty Moore, and uh, Chuck Berry, uh, Hey, this ain't a one-man show, man. This is, guys, this is a band. I'm listening to bands playing together. I'm listening to guys that know how to play with each other. This is connections between the drums, between the bass, between the guitar, between the voice. This is where it's at. You're picking up on this. Yeah. At, I mean, yeah. At 16 uh, without, now? Really, without, like... You're not breaking about it down. Okay, intellectualizing okay. about it, but I, I mean, I realize now that that's, hey, it's the way these guys are playing together mm. that is interesting, mm. especially listening to you know, Buddy Holly and the Crickets. Okay. Hey, you know, this is the template, man. Mm. You know, ask Paul McCartney, <laughs> ask John Lennon if you could. Right. Uh, the cat that writes them, plays them, produces them. The sings them, does you know? The, in other words, the whole package in one. Mm -hmm. You know, 
And yet I don't know anybody that's yet dared to try to seriously cover Peggy Sue. Like na even now? Yeah, even now, have they? No, some people do it on stage. Some people, but you know, some of those iconic records, Eddie Cochran, man, you know, he come on everybody, mm -hmm. summertime blues, mm -hmm. something else. Nobody's gonna touch that stuff with a stick because you because can't get can't. near it. Even now, you can't get near it. Was the Rolling Stones some some attempt to do that, or were you guys deciding that 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 we can't get near that, so we're going to do something else with it? No, they were a part of our turn on, but we also realized that whoever Elvis and Buddy and Eddie were listening to were some other cats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we quickly found out that they were people like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, T-Bone Walker, Muddy Waters. Yeah. And with that, it gives you freedom to do your own thing? No, it was to find out where these cats had got it from, because right. we knew nothing came out of a vacuum. Sure, you know, sure. And then I realized that Muddy, when I, when I finally met Muddy and we talked, about it, you know, that Robert Johnson, man. <laughs> That's the cat, you know. And he brought it up from Mississippi to Chicago. Then I, I realized I'd reached a sort of, a kind of pinnacle of, uh, of where I wanted to know where these guys are coming from. Because there's weird things going on like World War II, mm -hmm. you know, and um, there was no records being made at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the vinyl working. was going right. into rubber tires for the bummers and, the, the, and for, you know, war-related material. And so at the end of World War II, you have all of these cats, man, that have not made a record, at least for four or five years. Mm -hmm. And they've been, they've been playing mm -hmm. and they've been working throughout the war. Mm -hmm. And so which is why you got this incredible burst in 1946, 47, 48, of this incredible black music, mm -hmm. you know. Fats Domino, baby, you know, 1949, Blue Monday. Probably, some people call it the first rock and roll record, you know I mean? But I'd, I would hate to put a date and a name sure. on that, yeah. you know, but I mean, it's, it's a good call. Sure, you know? the, the one that a lot of people heard, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's a way with the Stones, for me, more satisfying than most other bands Every musician has their own lane, so to speak, where everybody, everything has its place and it's constantly bouncing off of, uh, off of each other. It's this endless conversation between the instruments and, and no, nobody's ever stepping on, on each other. I mean, like... like uh, hey, with the stones, <laughs> nothing set in concrete, you know? Right. But with a band of uh, interesting guys, you come in with an idea you come out with something that's even better than the idea, even maybe totally different to the idea you sure, went in with. Sure, you know, sure. it's that one little idea can suddenly become a really interesting song and a really interesting rhythm, a really interesting record. I guess, again, going back to the, to what I think of the Stone sound as, is that it's this endless kind of, kind of call and response between between two guitars and drums and bass and vocal, and it allows... The, the 3D of it is uh, to leave this space, this, uh, this little bit of silence here and there, and how to move it around. And really, you have to... There's no formula for this. It's... Uh, oh, I leave off here, right? I don't, you know, I push here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've always looked upon the, the, the silence and the... Uh, as that as being an extra tool, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's the instrument, and you don't know, and it doesn't cost a lot. Right, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Silence is but, cheap. Too. Yeah, you know, and it's that, it gives you, because it can produce that depth in, in a recording that uh, if you fill it all up, you know, the, the whole space is in your face, you know. When I saw uh, Sympathy for the Devil, the, the Godard movie, mm -hmm. and I was able to see uh, the Rolling Stones struggling through, through, you know, like, like day, it seemed like multiple so, days. Some, some of those things are struggles, man. Yeah. Like, you, know, you know, somebody will walk in with a song and it, but this to me is the great thing about recording and about making music. It really, when it comes down to it, it's who are you gonna end up playing with? With. 
and what material? It comes down to the song and the company. Mick came in with the song, right? right. Uh, but it was very, it was, uh, you know, great, great song, and the whole song was there, you know, please allow me, but it was very sort of Dylan-esque. Right. Uh, I mean, it was like a ballad. Uh, right. uh, and, uh, you know, you go through the process in the studio, which is the process I love of everybody going like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> let's rethink. Uh, what if we, like, push the beat up a bit? You know, they, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So suddenly I'm on bass, it's a samba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, but that to me is the beauty of recording, of going into a studio. You go in with some sort of semi-conceived idea of what you think this song is supposed to come out like. Mm. And it comes out something totally different because it's been filtered through all of the other guys in the band. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you realize that just your own idea is like, there's just, just one. Right, right. Under my thumb. You know, right. I, I come in, dun, 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 dun. But if it hadn't happened that in the studio lying around was a set of marimbas, right. and Brian Jones said, what if I double with that riff on dun, 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 dun. Right. Which, I mean, added the color and, and made the whole thing stick out. Hey, that's what I call artistic. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, that guys uh, can, out of themselves, one little idea can suddenly become a really interesting song and a really interesting rhythm, a really interesting record. The, the, this is another thing I was thinking about. The way that you guys approached on, on your first record, the way you approached the blues wasn't, it was reverent in one way, but it was also, you, you jacked it up, you jacked up the tempo, you know what I mean? And, and there's this like, True. there's a snottiness to it that... I, it, I think it was just youthful enthusiasm. Right. You know, I mean, it, the reverence is certainly there. Sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, but we didn't, I don't think, jack anything up for a reason. It wasn't deliberate. I think, you know, I mean, we did, uh, I want to make love to you, right. Muddy Waters, right? And his version is very slow. Yes, you know? and threatening. But we decided to say, hey, what if Muddy had treated this like Tiger in your tank? Or Mojo, got your Mojo working? It Muddy might just as well have, uh, you know, treated I want to make love to you in the same way as he treated, I got a tiger in the tank, or I got my Mojo working, you know? And also we know, you know, hey, we have, we are 18, 17, 18, and, uh, and our audience is about the same age, so uh, let's give it a little kick here. But this, to me, is the great thing about making music, is that some guy can walk in with an idea, and it sort of goes like that, and by the end of the evening, you've got something that's going like... And to me, the fascinating thing about recording is what can happen in the studio between musicians. The idea that came in and the thing that comes out at the other end are sometimes totally different. Transmogrified. And, 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 yeah, and that's, that's kind of the fun of it, For really, sure. You know? do, do you have friends that you write songs with now? Yes, Steve Jordan. <laughs> that, that's, so does, is he co-writer on the, on, on the new record? Yeah, 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 absolutely. This is a Jordan Richards collaboration Killer. from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody else that you ever mess with? Do you have any buddies that, 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 that you still... There's a guy called Mick Jagger that I love to write with. But he's hard, it's okay. hard, hard to get it, my hands on him. <laughs> and, uh, do you ever call <laughs> him and like, dude, can we write some songs, please? My, my only trick with me is I wait for him to come to me. So that's why it sometimes takes a while. So with Mick, it's a little torturous, you know. <laughs> it's time we did something together. He said mm, that. I'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> but so far, so good. <laughs> that's good. I mean, yeah, we're working on it. Yeah, yeah. Did Ike Turner make a huge impression on you? <laughs> Ike? Ike, yeah, I found him a fascinating guy, the band leader of the, of the most vicious kind. My second tour, our third tour, was Ike and Tina. And we were playing these small theatres, you know, we were in a corridor and the dressing rooms are like, you know, you know, just like this kind of thing, you know, every door is another dressing room. 
bang, bang, slap, waddle, bang, bang. Out would come Tina looking perfectly. That's fine. Do, very good. Ike's in the corner going, <laughs> really? <laughs> and Ike was a mean mother Vulcan. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, there's some people you don't pick on, and right. one of them is Tina. Right, right, right. Uh, Ike, the other story I have about Ike is he heard that honky tonk women, you know, it was the first time he'd heard the five string, uh, mm. which I had uh, like cottoned on from Rai Kuda. Right. I, you know, I'm in the dressing room, you know, I, 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 I would like to see you if you've got some time, you know, and sure. I go into Ike's dressing room, there's Ike, you know. Stash? <laughs> Show me that five-string shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> How did it work? <laughs> Bust off the bottom string. Mm -hmm. Tune the rest to G. I'll, 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 I'll show the, or do you want to show how you do it? That'd be yeah, cool if you well, did. It'd I be mean, much cooler. Yeah, we can probably do that, but we'd have to take this string right off. If you take it off, all right. Other way. <laughs> so he's dead. Can you pull it? No, I'll loosen it a little more. Anybody got pliers? <laughs> <laughs> He's in there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. We're destroying this guitar. All right, we could do this. Yeah, we could probably do that. I mean, been all the time, man. Right, right. right, okay, let me tread on that so you don't <laughs> ring around. <clears throat> all right. All right. See, this is real. So the next trick is. Uh, <laughs> G. Turn that. So get an octave the a, going. The A string goes down to G. He stays the same. Then you drop him. That move, or did it come naturally with that? With that, okay, that well, little... once you started to figure it, I mean, at the time I was like, I'm gonna get nowhere more with six string guitar. You I got know? you. I'm just gonna be repeating myself and repeating myself. And, uh, and when I found the five string, it was like learning a new instrument. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, all the relate, all the tonal relationships change. Yeah, yeah. Totally there's cool. five, there's right. five strings. There's only three notes. Mm -hmm. After that, you need two hands, one ass. One ass. <laughs> <laughs> And Ike's like, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, I can handle that. And also, it's cheaper. You don't have a spring for that extra, for that extra string. string. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming, man. It Such means the world pleasure, to me. Right? Yeah, it, it really talk means the world. so simpatico. Yeah, man. Oh, totally. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs>